They slaughtered billions until they met us. The Tholian Empire, a race of ruthless insectoid aliens, had terrorized the galaxy for centuries with their crystalline web ships and plasma weapons. No civilization could withstand them. Planet after planet fell, populations massacred or enslaved under the sadistic rule of Emperor Izar. Then the Tholians invaded the human colony of New Eden. Swarms of web ships enveloped the colony's defenses. Hordes of Tholian warriors descended, butchering civilians. In the chaos, former space marine Dylan Lewis rallied survivors and launched a desperate counterattack. Outnumbered and outgunned, they fought with grit and ingenuity, disabling several web ships with improvised weapons. They rescued colonists before fleeing to a nearby moon. News of the vicious attack spread like wildfire. It ignited a powder keg of human fury. No longer would humanity cower before alien tyranny. The Earth Alliance declared war on the Tholian Empire, even as more colonies burned. Human scientists worked feverishly to reverse-engineer Tholian technology. Engineers designed nimble fighters and powered combat armor to counter the enemy's weapons. Factories churned out a war machine backed by the wrath of billions. Humankind struck back. The elite human defense force launched devastating attacks into the heart of the empire. Leading them was Dylan Lewis, now legendary rebel commander known as the Ghost. His daring raids liberated human prisoners and exposed the Tholians' fragility, bringing hope to the oppressed. But Emperor Izar would not be defied. Enraged, he redoubled his onslaught, blockading Earth and its colonies. His invasion forces swarmed to man defenses. Fleets clashed across the stars in battles that lit the void like supernovae. The Tholians sought to snuff out humanity's fire. They did not understand. When pushed to the brink, humans always found a way. We would never go quietly. Whispers emerged of a mysterious signal from deep in Tholian space, spurring their aggression, puppeting them to greater conquest. This signal was the key to victory, but to triumph, Dylan Lewis and humanity's warriors must first survive the Tholian's wrath. They must weather the coming storm, fight with everything they have before all is lost. In the depths of Tholian-occupied space, resistance burned like an unquenchable flame. On mining colonies like Aegis Prime, once vital outposts now turned into labor camps, humans toiled under the watchful compound eyes of their insectoid masters. But in the shadows, insurgents plotted and prepared awaiting their moment to strike back. Jace Kessler, a young engineer with a knack for machinery and a will of iron, had risen quickly through the rebel ranks. His intimate knowledge of Aegis Prime's honeycomb-like mining tunnels, a labyrinth that now housed the Tholian Hive City, proved invaluable. Together with his fellow resistance fighters, Jace hatched a daring plan to bury the aliens in their own nest. Explosives were smuggled piece by piece, hidden in ore shipments and supply caches. Stolen data pads provided a map of the hive's weaknesses, key structural points that, if destroyed, would bring the whole city crashing down. Jace and his saboteurs spent weeks in secret, rigging demolition charges in crawl spaces and ventilation ducts, always one step ahead of the Tholian patrols. When the time came, the insurgents struck without warning. A press of a button, and the explosions rang out like thunder. The Tholian tunnels crumpled and collapsed, burying warriors and workers alike beneath tons of rubble. The queen's shrieks of rage echoed through the corridors as her chambers caved in, entombing her in a rocky sarcophagus. Across Aegis Prime, the resistance erupted in an orgy of sabotage and uprising, overwhelming their occupiers. News of the victory spread like wildfire through rebel networks. Jace found himself catapulted to fame, his name whispered with reverence among the oppressed. Transmissions poured in from other cells, seeking guidance, inspiration, tools to emulate the Aegis Prime model. Bit by bit, an underground web took form, a nervous system to link the disparate pockets of resistance. It was this web that led Jace to Commander Dylan Lewis, the legendary ghost himself. A tight beam message, a set of coordinates, an offer of alliance. They met in secret, aboard a gutted ore freighter adrift in the void. Two leaders, both forged in the crucible of war, united by a common purpose. Together they planned, schemed, looked to take the fight to the enemy on a grander scale. Tholian supply convoys crisscrossed occupied space like arteries, 
ferrying troops and material to the front lines. Bleeding them could hobble the aliens' advance. By precious time, it would be a gamble, but Jason Dillon had staked everything on bolder wagers before. The hijacking played out like a cosmic ballet. A distress beacon lured the convoy off course. Breaching pods filled with volunteers punctured the hulls of the lumbering ships. Plasma fire lit the corridors as the boarders fought their way to the control decks. In the end, the transports were theirs. The Tholian crews just more bodies drifting in the void. But it was in the cargo holds that they found true horror. Stasis pods, tens of thousands of them, each containing a human captive trapped in frozen sleep. Men, women, children, all ripped from conquered worlds and shipped to some terrible fate. A chill settled in Jace's bones as he stared out over the rows of silent sleepers. The Tholians were not just conquering, they were harvesting. Newfound urgency gripped the resistance. These prisoners had to be found, liberated before the unthinkable could occur. But even as Jace and Dylan laid their plans, an even greater threat gathered on the horizon. Whispers reached them of a secret weapon, something called Project Chrysalis, nearing completion in the depths of Tholian space. A murmur of dread, hinting at a power to snuff out humanity's defiance once and for all. While Jace scrambled to find the location of the captive sleepers, Dylan prepared his warriors for what might be their final mission. Ending Project Chrysalis, whatever the cost, he would lead the strike team himself, the ghost on one last hunt, even if it meant sacrificing himself to buy humanity a future. But fortune is a fickle mistress. The team never returned from the Chrysalis station, swallowed by the void. Only fragmented transmissions hinted at their fate. A desperate assault, a Tholian trap, capture, and a name repeated with dread, Zektar, the Emperor's Iron Fist. Now Jace found himself at the helm of a splintered resistance, staring down an enemy that held humanity's best and brightest in its clutches. The engineer-turned-rebel had walked through fire before, but this would be an inferno unlike any he had faced. The clock was ticking on Project Chrysalis, on the legions of captives hidden somewhere out among the stars, on Dylan and his men. The Tholians thought they could break humanity's spirit, but they had forgotten the iron law of our species, the truth that had carried us to the stars and beyond. When our backs are to the wall, when all hope seems lost, that is when humans are most dangerous. Jace would remind the aliens of that fact, even if he had to tear their empire down around them to do it. The ghost was out there waiting in the dark, and humanity would not let him wait in vain. The resistance would find a way. They had to. The alternative was too terrible to contemplate. Jace Kessler's fingers flew across the holographic display, decrypting the latest intelligence packet from their network of spies. His eyes widened as the data coalesced into a coherent picture. We found them, he breathed, hardly daring to believe it. The captives. Dylan Lewis leaned in, his weathered face illuminated by the soft blue glow. Where? A facility deep in Tholian space. They're calling it the Hive. Dylan's mind focused. Then that's where we're going. Within hours, their stealth ship sliced through the void, masked by experimental cloaking technology. As they approached the Hive, its true scale became apparent. A sprawling complex of interconnected structures that dwarfed even the largest Tholian Hive cities. How do we get in? Jace muttered, studying the schematics. Dylan pointed to a maintenance hatch. There. It's a tight squeeze, but it's our best shot. They docked with practice precision. Jace led the way, his slender frame easily navigating the cramped access tunnel. Dylan followed, each movement careful and deliberate. The hatch opened into a dimly lit corridor. Strange organic growths pulsed along the walls. The air felt thick, humid. Life signs? Dylan whispered. Jace checked his scanner. Thousands, most in some kind of stasis. They crept forward, weapons ready. A door slid open, revealing a cavernous chamber filled with row upon row of translucent pods. Inside each, a human figure floated, perfectly still. My God, Jace breathed. Dylan approached one of the pods, wiping condensation from its surface. The face within was serene, unaware of the horrors around it. A piercing shriek shattered the silence. 
Jace whirled to see a Tholian scientist, its crystalline body glinting in the low light. Before it could raise the alarm, Dylan's plasma rifle flashed. The alien shattered into a thousand glittering shards. We've been made, Dylan growled. Move! They raced deeper into the complex, alarms blaring. Rounding a corner, they stumbled into a laboratory that defied description. Mutated creatures writhed in containment tanks. On operating tables lay bodies, human and Tholian alike, splayed open, their genetic material intermingling in horrific ways. A voice, cold and clinical, echoed from a nearby console. Hybridization trial. Two Darthonst 17 successful. Proceed to phase three testing. They're combining us, Jace realized, revulsion twisting his features. A group of prisoners huddled in a corner, terror etched on their faces. Among them, a man in a tattered lab coat caught Dylan's eye. You, are you in charge here? The man shook his head frantically. No, I'm Dr. Novak. They forced me to work on this abomination. Then you're coming with us, Dylan decided. Everyone who can walk, move. We're getting out of here. They fought their way back to the ship. Tholian guards swarming from every direction. Plasma bolts sizzled past as Dylan provided covering fire. Jace herded the prisoners aboard, his stolen Tholian rifle spitting crystalline shards. As the ship disengaged, Dylan turned to Dr. Novak. What were they doing in there? What's the end game? Novak's eyes were haunted. It's called Project Chrysalis. They're creating an army. Hybrids with human adaptability and Tholian strength. If they succeed, then we lose the war, Jace finished grimly. Dylan's comm unit crackled to life, a familiar voice tinged with static. This is Admiral Zektar to all Tholian forces. The hive has been compromised. Dr. Zixis is terminated for this failure. I am assuming direct control of Project Chrysalis. Let the extinction of humanity commence. As their ship raced back to resistance territory, Dylan exchanged a look with Jace. The stakes had never been higher. We need to move fast, Dylan said. Gather the leaders. It's time to take the fight to the hive. Jace nodded, already plotting their next move. But a nagging thought tugged at the back of his mind. That mysterious signal, still broadcasting from the depths of space. What secrets did it hold? And would unlocking them be their salvation or their doom? Jace's fingers flew across the holographic display, decrypting the latest intelligence packet. His eyes widened as the data coalesced into a coherent picture. We found them, he breathed, the captives. Dylan leaned in, his weathered face illuminated by the soft blue glow. Where? A facility deep in Tholian space. They're calling it the Hive. Before they could act on this revelation, alarms blared throughout the resistance base. A frantic voice crackled over the comms. Incoming transmission! It's... It's Captain Zara Valdez. The hollow display flickered, replaced by the battle-worn visage of Captain Valdez. Her uniform was scorched, a gash across her forehead still oozing blood. This is an emergency broadcast to all resistance cells. We've just completed a high-risk operation against the Zorgax flagship. Dylan and Jace exchanged shot glances. The Zorgax? How did they fit into this? Zara continued her voice urgent. We've captured their leader, Supreme Commander Craxus. The intel we've recovered is... devastating. The Tholian attacks were just a diversion. The Zorgax are the true threat, and their goal is nothing less than the complete annihilation of Earth and humanity. The room fell silent as the implications sank in. Jace's mind raced, connecting dots he hadn't even known existed. The mysterious signal, the Tholian aggression, the human captives... It all suddenly made a horrifying kind of sense. A massive Zorgax fleet is en route, Zara pressed on. They've constructed a planet killer they call the World Burner. We need to mobilize every asset we have. Humanity's very existence is at stake. The transmission cut out, leaving Dylan and Jace in stunned silence. It was Jace who finally spoke, his voice barely above a whisper. The Hive, the captives, it's all connected to this Zorgax plan somehow. Dylan nodded grimly. We can't abandon those people, but Earth takes priority. We need to get this information to our remaining military leaders immediately. 
As if in answer to his words, another alert sounded. Reports flooded in of a massive Zorgax attack on Sandari Prime. Billions dead. A planet reduced to rubble. They're sending a message, Dylan growled, trying to break our will to fight. Jace's expression resolute. Then let's send one back. In the days that followed, the resistance threw itself into frenzied activity. Every ship that could fly, every weapon that could fire, every soldier who could stand, all were pressed into service. Jace found himself working alongside engineers from a dozen worlds, retrofitting civilian craft into makeshift warships. As the human fleet gathered at Jericho Way Station, whispers spread of Captain Valdez's promotion to Supreme Commander of the entire Armada. Jace watched from a viewport as ships of all shapes and sizes poured into the system, a testament to humanity's desperate ingenuity and will to survive. Dylan approached, his face etched with grit. We're being deployed to the front lines. You ready for this? Jace nodded, thinking of the billions on Earth, of the captives in the hive, of all they stood to lose. Let's remind these Zorgaks why humanity made it to the stars in the first place. As they boarded their ship, joining the massive fleet assembling for battle, Jace couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning. Whatever happened next would determine the fate of not just Earth, but all of humanity scattered across the stars. The resistance had started as a fight against Tholian oppression. Now it had become a war for survival against an enemy that sought their total extermination. As their ship powered up, joining the Armada as it prepared to jump to light speed, Jace knew that the coming battle would test humanity like never before. The human armada burst into existence around Zorgax Prime, a brilliant flash of light heralding their arrival. Jace's hands gripped the console as their ship rocked from the sudden deceleration. Through the view screen, he watched as countless vessels of the human alliance spread out in perfect formation. Supreme Commander Zara Valdez's voice crackled over the comms. All ships engage targets! For Earth and humanity. The void erupted in chaos. Plasma bolts and energy beams crisscrossed space as human and Zorgax ships clashed. Jace's vessel shuddered under enemy fire, shields flaring. Dylan barked orders from the captain's chair, his eyes fixed on the tactical display. New reading, Jace called out. The Zorgax are deploying some kind of superweapon. Dylan's face hardened. The world burner. We need to... His words were cut short as a blinding beam lanced across space. A nearby planet, home to a human colony, shattered into fragments. Stunned silence gripped the bridge. All ships, this is Valdez, the Supreme Commander's voice rang out, tinged with steel willpower. We have one shot at this. The Avalon will neutralize the world burner, continue the assault on the Zorgax fleet. Jace exchanged a look with Dylan. They both knew what Valdez's words truly meant. Their ship dove back into the fray, weaving through debris fields and swarms of enemy fighters. Jace's fingers danced across the controls, rerouting power to weapons and shields as needed. Dylan coordinated with other captains, orchestrating precise strike patterns against Zorgak's weak points. Through the chaos of battle, Jace caught glimpses of the Avalon streaking towards the massive world burner. Supreme Commander Valdez's voice came through one last time. For Earth, for humanity, for all we are, this ship will be our final defiance. The Avalon collided with the world burner in a silent explosion that bloomed across space, momentarily outshining the system's star. When the light faded, both ships were gone. A stunned hush fell over the comms. Then as one, the human fleet surged forward with renewed vigor. Jace's fingers flew across his console, pushing their systems to the limit. Dylan's orders came fast and precise, guiding their ship through the Zorgax defenses. As the battle raged on, Jace couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of a new chapter in humanity's struggle. The Zorgax threat might soon be broken, but countless challenges lay ahead. The captives in the hive, the Tholian machinations, the hybrid experiments, all remained unwillpowered. He glanced at Dylan, seeing his own drive mirrored in the captain's eyes. Whatever came next, they would face it together. For now, there was a battle to win. Win. The human fleet pressed its advantage, driving deeper into Zorgak's territory. Jace's attention snapped to a priority alert flashing on his console. 
Dylan, the Avalon. Dylan leaned forward, his face tightening. What's happening? It's embedded in the world burner. The core didn't detonate. A collective gasp rippled through the bridge. The Avalon's sacrifice was supposed to be their ace, their one shot at neutralizing the Zorgax superweapon. Now that slim hope had evaporated. New transmission, the comms officer shouted. It's from the Zorgax flagship. The main view screen flickered to life, revealing the twisted visage of Emperor Craxus. His alien features contorted into what passed for a smirk among his species. Humans, Craxus's voice dripped with contempt. Your pathetic gambit has failed. Witness now the true power of the Zorgax Empire. The transmission cut out, replaced by a tactical view of the world burner. The massive construct began to shift, its primary weapon array aligning with a distant point in space. It's targeting Earth, Jace breathed, his fingers flying across the console. We can't stop it from here. Dylan's face hardened. We need to buy time. All ships focus fire on the world burner's weapon systems. The human fleet responded, pouring everything they had into the Zorgax superweapon. But their attacks seemed to dissipate harmlessly against its energy shields. Suddenly, Jace's console lit up with new data. Wait, I'm picking up movement inside the world burner. It's, it's Zara. She survived the impact. Dylan's eyes widened. Can we get a signal through? Jace shook his head. Negative. Too much interference. But look. He pulled up a schematic of the world burner, overlaying it with sensor data. They're moving through the ship, multiple teams. Understanding dawned on Dylan's face. She's going for control from the inside. For agonizing minutes, the battle raged on. Human ships fell to Zorgax weapons, while others limped away, trailing debris and atmosphere. Yet they fought on, buying precious time for whatever Zara had planned. A blinding flash erupted from the world burner's flank. Jace's console exploded with new readings. One of the main weapon clusters just went offline. Another explosion bloomed, then another. Cheers erupted across the bridge as system after system on the world burner went dark. She's done it, Dylan exclaimed. All ships, press the attack. We need to... His words cut off as the world burner's primary weapon began to glow with terrible energy. Jace's heart sank. They disabled so much, but not the main cannon. It was still primed to fire on Earth. Emergency broadcast from the world burner, the comms officer shouted. The view screen flickered once more, but instead of Craxus, they saw Zara. Her uniform was torn and bloodied, but her eyes blazed with triumph. To all human forces, she said, her voice steady despite the chaos visible behind her. The world burner is ours. As if to punctuate her words, the massive weapon discharged. But instead of lancing out towards Earth, it swept across the Zorgax fleet. Ships disintegrated under its fury, reduced to atoms in an instant. Jace watched in awe as the world burner, now under human control, systematically obliterated the Zorgax armada. He turned to Dylan, seeing his own mix of relief and disbelief mirrored in the captain's face. We did it, Jace said softly. We actually did it. Dylan nodded, a rare smile crossing his features. We won the battle, but something tells me our war is a long way to go. As if in answer to his words, a priority message flashed across Jace's screen. His eyes widened as he read its contents. Dylan, he said, his voice tense, we're getting reports of Tholian activity near the hive. Whatever they were planning with those human captives, I think it's about to begin. Begin. Jace's words hung in the air, heavy with implications. Dylan leaned forward, scanning the incoming data. What kind of activity? Massive energy readings, Jace replied, fingers dancing across his console. They're powering up something big. Before Dylan could respond, a priority transmission cut through their comms. Supreme Commander Zara Valdez's face appeared on the main view screen, her expression a mix of triumph and concern. Attention all ships, she began, her voice steady despite the chaos visible behind her on the bridge of the captured world burner. Our victory here is significant, but our work is far from done. We've detected increased Tholian activity near the hive. All available ships are to rendezvous at these coordinates immediately. 
The view screen blinked off, replaced by a tactical display of their new destination. Dylan nodded grimly. You heard her. Plot a course. Maximum speed. As their ship broke formation and jumped to light speed, Jace couldn't shake the feeling that they were hurtling from one crisis into another. The journey passed in tense silence, broken only by status updates and course corrections. They dropped out of light speed to find a scene of controlled chaos. The massive form of the world burner dominated the view, surrounded by a growing fleet of human and allied vessels. Shuttles and work pods swarmed around it like insects, reconfiguring systems and repainting hull plating. We're being hailed, Jace announced. It's Commander Ethan Ross. The grizzled face of Ross appeared on screen. Captain, we need your ship to join the perimeter defense. We're picking up long-range scans of Zorgak's loyalist forces massing in nearby systems. Dylan nodded. Understood, Commander. We're on it. As they took up their assigned position, Jace watched in awe as the world burner continued its transformation. What had once been an instrument of destruction was being repurposed into humanity's new command center. Days blurred together as they maintained their vigilant watch. Reports trickled in of uprisings and attacks on far-flung human colonies. Each time, Jace felt a pang of frustrated helplessness, knowing they couldn't be everywhere at once. Then came the day of Chancellor Valdez's inauguration. The crew gathered around view screens to watch the ceremony broadcast from Earth. As Zara took her oath of office, Jace couldn't help but feel a surge of pride. Her words rang out across the stars. Today, we stand not just as humans, but as members of a greater galactic community. We will face the challenges ahead with courage, compassion, and unity. The speech was met with thunderous applause, both on Earth and throughout the fleet, but the celebrations were short-lived. Alarms blared across their ship, startling the crew back to their stations. Multiple contacts, Jace called out, his hands flying over his console. Zorgax signatures, coming in hot. Dylan's voice cut through the chaos. Battle stations, all hands prepare for combat. As their ship banked hard to face the oncoming threat, Jace caught a glimpse of the world burner, now christened the Command Citadel, powering up its weapons. The first shots of a new conflict lit up the darkness of space, and Jace knew their struggle was far from finished. The galaxy held its breath as humanity stepped into a new era of interstellar leadership. The defeat of the Zorgax Empire ushered in years of relative peace, with Earth at the helm of the fledgling interstellar confederacy. Aboard the Command Citadel, once the dreaded world burner, Grand Chancellor Zara Valdez, poured over reports from the far reaches of known space. Her brow furrowed as she focused on a particular data stream. It can't be, she muttered, enhancing the signal analysis. A knock at her office door interrupted her thoughts. Enter, she called out. Captain Michael Steele strode in, his posture perfectly upright. You wanted to see me, Chancellor? Zara nodded, gesturing to the seat across from her desk. Michael, do you remember the signal that drove the Zorgax into their conquest frenzy? Steele's eyes widened. Of course, but surely it's gone silent by now. I'm afraid not, Zara said, turning her display so Steele could see. It's still out there, pulsing from beyond the fringes of charted space. She leaned forward, her voice low and urgent. I'm authorizing a reconnaissance mission to trace this signal to its source, and I want you to lead it. Steele's pulse quickened. Me? But Chancellor, surely there are others more qualified. Zara cut him off with a wave of her hand. You're the best tactician we have, Michael. And more importantly, I trust you. The Harbinger is ready for her maiden voyage. Take her and a hand-picked crew into the unknown. Weeks later, the Harbinger sliced through the darkness of uncharted space. Steel stood on the bridge, surrounded by the soft glow of instrument panels and the low hum of the ship's systems. Status report, he called out. His science officer, Dr. Lyra Chen, looked up from her console. Signal strength is increasing, Captain. We're definitely on the right track. Suddenly, alarms blared. The tactical officer, Lieutenant Ravi Mehta, shouted, Multiple contacts! Unknown configuration! Before Steele could respond, the view screen lit up with streaks of weapons fire. The Harbinger rocked violently as it took hit after hit. 
Evasive maneuvers, Steele ordered, gripping his chair as the ship lurched. Return fire! But the alien vessels danced around their shots with impossible agility. Their phase-shifting technology made them nearly impossible to target. Hull breach on deck four, Maida reported, his voice strained. Shields failing! Steele watched in horror as the alien ships closed in for the kill. All hands, brace for impact! The Harbinger plummeted towards the surface of a barren, rocky world. Steele's last conscious thought was of Zara and how he had failed her. He awoke to the acrid smell of burning circuitry and the groan of stressed metal. Steele pushed himself up, wincing at the pain that shot through his body. Around him, a handful of crew members stirred. Status report, he croaked, his throat dry and raw. Dr. Chen limped over, her face streaked with blood and grime. We're alive, barely, but the ship is a total loss. A high-pitched whine cut through the air. Steele looked up to see one of their reconnaissance drones disintegrate in mid-flight, struck by an energy weapon he didn't recognize. Take cover, he shouted, diving behind a twisted bulkhead. Shapes moved in the swirling dust, hunched bestial forms that moved with eerie coordination. Their eyes gleamed with predatory intelligence as they closed in on the crash site. Steele reached for his sidearm, only to find his holster empty. He locked eyes with Dr. Chen, seeing his own fear reflected in her gaze. The alien scavengers swarmed over the wreckage, their clawed hands grasping at the surviving crew. Steele felt rough hands seize him, dragging him from his hiding place. He struggled, but his captor's strength was inhuman. As he was pulled away from the crash site, Steele caught a glimpse of a massive structure in the distance an entrance to what could only be an underground complex. His mind raced, trying to piece together the fragments of information. The signal, the advanced ships, these primitive yet coordinated attackers, it all pointed to something far more sinister than they had anticipated. As the darkness of the alien outpost swallowed him, Steele realized with chilling certainty that this was only the beginning of humanity's greatest challenge yet. The coded distress beacon pulsed weakly from the wreckage of the Harbinger, its signal barely penetrating the dense atmosphere of the alien world. Light years away, in the heart of Earth's defensive perimeter, Grand Chancellor Zara Valdez stared at the flickering holographic display, her eyes sharp. Prepare the intrepid for immediate departure, she ordered, her voice cutting through the tense silence of the war room. And send out the call. I want every available ship and ally at these coordinates within 48 hours. As the massive human fleet assembled, Zara paced the bridge of the Intrepid, her mind racing through tactical scenarios. The journey into uncharted space was fraught with danger, but the thought of leaving Steele and his crew to their fate was unthinkable. Days later, as they approached the coordinates of Steele's last transmission, klaxons blared across the armada. Multiple contacts, shouted the tactical officer. Unknown configuration, closing fast. The void erupted in a maelstrom of weapons fire. Sleek, otherworldly ships danced between the human vessels, their energy weapons carving swaths of destruction through the fleet's vanguard. Evasive maneuvers, Zara commanded, gripping the arms of her chair as the intrepid shuddered under the assault. All ships, return fire. The battle raged for hours a desperate struggle against an enemy of overwhelming technological superiority. Zara watched, her heart heavy, as ship after ship winked out of existence on the tactical display. Chancellor, her XO reported, we've managed to establish a foothold near the planet's surface, but our losses are catastrophic. Zara nodded, her eyes fixed on the swirling chaos beyond the viewscreen. We need to end this quickly, prep the Guardians for deployment. In the Intrepid's teleportation bay, Commander Ethan Ross stood before his team of elite operatives. The air crackled with tension and the hum of interdimensional energies. This is a smash and grab, Ross briefed them, his voice steady despite the ship's violent shuddering. We go in, we find Steele and his people, and we get out. Watch each other's backs. We have no idea what we're walking into. The teleporters flared to life, enveloping the strike team in a cocoon of shimmering energy. In a heartbeat, they materialized within the alien complex. Chaos erupted immediately. Swarms of hovering drones descended upon them, their weapons spitting streams of corrosive energy. 
Ross dove for cover, barking orders as his team scattered. Alara, clear us a path, he shouted over the din of battle. The lithe psionic warrior nodded, her eyes glowing with otherworldly power. A wave of psychic energy pulsed outward, smashing a corridor through the sea of drones. As they pressed deeper into the facility, the very walls seemed to shift and reform around them. Crag, the hulking Zentradi juggernaut, smashed through a suddenly materialized barrier, roaring in defiance. These puny aliens think they can stop Crag? He bellowed, hurling chunks of twisted metal at oncoming hostiles. Room by room, corridor by corridor, the Guardians fought their way through the nightmarish labyrinth. Each chamber held new horrors, biomechanical monstrosities, reality-warping traps, waves of alien warriors driven by a singular hive mind. Finally, they breached a heavily fortified chamber. There, amidst a tangle of alien biotech, lay Steel and the surviving members of his crew, their bodies connected to pulsating organic machinery. Get them out of there, Ross ordered, laying down suppressing fire as his team worked to free the captives. Steele's eyes fluttered open as the connections were severed. Ross, he croaked, his voice weak. You shouldn't have come. A bone-chilling screech cut through the air, freezing the blood in their veins. The far wall of the chamber dissolved, revealing a sight that defied comprehension. Towering amorphous shapes loomed in the shadows, their forms constantly shifting and realigning. Eyes, if they could be called eyes, burned with eldritch fire, and the very fabric of reality seemed to warp around them. Elder beings, Steele whispered, his face ashen. We never stood a chance. One of the monstrous entities reached out, its limbs stretching impossibly across the chamber. Where it passed, matter simply ceased to exist, leaving behind nothing but a void of absolute nothingness. Fall back, Ross screamed, unleashing his entire arsenal at the nightmarish creatures. His weapons might as well have been spitballs for all the effect they had. Alara stepped forward her body glowing with psionic energy. I'll hold them off, she said, her voice calm despite the terror etched on her face. Get the others out of here. Before Ross could protest, Crag lumbered to her side. Crag stay too. Crag fight big scary things. Ross hesitated for a split second, then nodded grimly. May your ancestors welcome you home, he said. The traditional Zentradi farewell feeling woefully inadequate. As Ross and the remaining Guardians retreated with Steel and the other rescued prisoners, Alara and Crag faced the oncoming horrors. Alara's psionic barriers flared against the Elder Being's reality-warping attacks, while Crag hurled himself bodily at the monstrosities, his Zentradi battle fury driving him to impossible feats of strength. In the complex's control center, Ross frantically worked the alien controls, guided by Steel's half-delirious instructions. If we overload the dimensional gateways, Steele explained between ragged breaths, we can create a cascade failure. It'll take out the whole facility. As the elder beings closed in, Ross initiated the overload sequence. Alarms blared, and the very air seemed to vibrate with building energy. Go! Alara's voice rang out in their minds, strained with effort. We'll keep them occupied as long as we can. The surviving members of the strike team activated their emergency teleport beacons, disappearing in flashes of light just as the complex began to implode. Back aboard the Intrepid, Zara watched in horror as the planet's surface erupted in a cataclysmic explosion. The shockwave rippled outward, tearing through space-time itself. Get us out of here, she ordered, even as reports of mounting casualties flooded in from the battered fleet. As the remaining human ships limped away from the devastating battle, Steel was rushed to the medical bay. Zara stood by his bedside, her face a mask of concern. What did you find out there, Michael? She asked softly. Steel's eyes were haunted as he met her gaze. Something that makes the Zorgax look like children playing at war, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. And I fear this is only the beginning. Beginning. And I fear this is only the... Steele's words were cut off as another tremor rocked the ship. Zara steadied herself against the bulkhead, her eyes hardening with willpower. We need to move, now. She turned to her communications officer. Send the order. All ships, prepare for emergency jump. We're getting out of here. 
As the battered remnants of humanity's fleet limped away from the devastation, Zara poured over the data extracted from the alien facility. The implications were staggering, each new revelation more horrifying than the last. In her war room aboard the Intrepid, Zara addressed her inner circle. The threat we face is beyond anything we've encountered. These elder beings have been manipulating galactic events for eons. The Zorgaks were just pawns in their game. Admiral Chen, her face lined with exhaustion, spoke up. What's our next move, Chancellor? Zara's fingers danced over a holographic display, bringing up schematics for a device unlike anything they'd seen before. We activate the Hades Protocol. A collective gasp rippled through the room. The Hades Protocol was the stuff of whispered rumors, a doomsday contingency so secret that most believed it to be myth. Using the intel we extracted, we're going to hit them where it hurts, Zara continued, a preemptive strike on their throne world before they can fully mobilize. Captain Steele, still pale from his ordeal, but eyes burning with willpower, stepped forward. I volunteer to lead the mission. Zara nodded, unsurprised. I was hoping you'd say that, Michael. We're outgunned and outmatched in conventional warfare. This has to be a surgical strike, using technology we've reverse-engineered from our encounters. In the weeks that followed, Steele assembled a team of elite operatives, each chosen for their unique skills and unbreakable will. The refitted Harbinger hummed with new, alien-derived tech as they prepared for their risky move. On the eve of their departure, Zara found Steele on the observation deck, his gaze fixed on the stars beyond. Second thoughts? she asked, joining him at the viewport. Steele shook his head. No, but I can't help wondering, what if we're just postponing the inevitable? Zara's hand found his shoulder, squeezing gently. Then we postpone it. We fight. It's what we do. The launch bay was a hive of controlled chaos as Steele's team made final preparations. Dr. Chen, now serving as mission specialist, ran last-minute diagnostics on their slipstream capsules. Remember, she cautioned, these will get you past their defenses, but they're experimental. Once you're through, you're on your own. Steele nodded, sealing his helmet. Understood. All units, final check. We jump in 60 seconds. The capsules rocketed out of the Harbinger, immediately vanishing from conventional sensors. As they plunged into the roiling maelstrom of transdimensional space, Steel felt reality itself bend around them. Emerging on the other side, they found themselves in orbit around a world that defied description. Vast, impossible structures stretched from the surface into space, pulsing with eldritch energies. Deploying countermeasures, Steele ordered. A swarm of microscopic drones erupted from their capsules, carrying a payload of hybridized virogenics. As the planet's defense grid faltered, Steele's team plummeted towards the surface in their assault dropships. The alien landscape rushed up to meet them, a nightmarish tableau of twisting spires and writhing biomechanical constructs. They touched down amid a storm of weapons fire, the air itself seeming to recoil from their presence. Steele's voice crackled over the comm. Push forward! We find their command center and end this! As they battled through the otherworldly citadel, each chamber revealed new horrors. In one vast hall, they discovered row upon row of stasis pods, each containing a twisted hybrid of human and alien DNA. My God, Dr. Chen whispered, her face ashen behind her visor. They're not just trying to conquer us. They're trying to remake us in their image. Deeper they pressed through reality-warping corridors and chambers that seemed to defy the laws of physics. Finally, they breached a massive door, finding themselves in what could only be the heart of the alien stronghold. Steele's eyes widened as he took in the sight before him. A writhing mass of tentacles and eyes surrounded a pulsing, multi-dimensional construct that hurt to look at directly. That's it, he breathed. The Nexus mind, plant the charges and... His words were cut off as a psychic assault slammed into them, threatening to overwhelm their minds. Through the haze of pain, Steele saw his team faltering, some dropping to their knees. With monumental effort, he raised his weapon and fired directly into the alien construct. The resulting explosion sent shockwaves of unreality rippling through the chamber. As alarms blared and the very fabric of space-time began to unravel around them, 
Steele knew their window of opportunity was rapidly closing. He opened a channel to the Harbinger. Mission accomplished. But there's more. They're planning something bigger, something that could rewrite the entire universe. We need to... Static filled the comm as another explosion rocked the alien citadel. Steele turned to his team, his voice urgent. We've done what we came to do. Now we need to get out of here before... You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.